for FTC Crash Course Design, they are episode number two. We are going to be talking about the introductions to CAD in FTC and also Inventor Professional. The first step is to actually download Inventor 2020. And to do this, go or navigate to uh, the Invent or Autodesk website. Uh, you can do this by either typing in Autodesk and finding Inventor or just typing in Autodesk Inventor 2020. Uh, next up is going to be to sign in, uh, but we are actually not going to be signing in. We are going to be creating an account. For this, uh, you should just be able to fill out basic information like your name, email address, and password. And then after this, it's going to ask you for like a school or something. And uh, you need to type in your high school email and your high school uh, to be able to get the free three years license for your Autodesk account. After you do this, there will be a download link for your inventor. And then once you finish installing it, you should have something that kind of looks like this. Uh, to start this, we are going to create a new project folder for everything. Uh, to do this, click new, and then we are going to be doing a new single user project. I'll uh, title the project name uh, design. And then uh, select the folder that you want to do this to. And we are going to be doing it to my account, which is or my folder, which is going to be RobotCAD. Okay, and then finish. Uh, all this stuff is our old account, or is from our previous robot design, but we're not going to be messing with that stuff. Uh, next, we are going to create a new part. Uh, we are going to be doing a standard IPT, which is going to be all your basic parts for this lesson. And create. And then I'm going to be explaining all the basic tools. Okay, uh, but before I'm going to create a basic sketch. To do this, click on this box right here. And then after you do that, you are able to select a plane. We're going to be doing the XZ plane for this video. Now basic parts. Uh, the line tool is self-explanatory. You click once and then you can either type in a distance of how long you want it and also if you want you can type in a degree. I'm going to type in let's do 1.5 inches and then hit tab and then let's do it at a 45 degree angle and now it gives you a 45 degree line. Another tool is the circle tool. Uh, I'm going to place this circle actually let's do it at the origin and I'm going to drag this out until I get to the edge of this. And this will create a three inch circle because you did a measurement of 1.5 inches already. I am now also gonna do another line, which is from the origin to the top. And now this creates a solid shape. So it means I'm able to hit finish sketch, zoom out a little using the scroll wheel and extrude. Now I'm able to extrude just that part because it is a solid body. Uh, this is because this is one shape and then this is a separate shape because these connecting lines. The next thing I'm going to teach you is the extrude. I'm going to rotate it around. Um, your distance A is how far it's going to go up. Like four would be four inches because I have my standards at the inches instead of a metric. Uh, you can do 0.25 and it'll be two. 0.25. Another option is this tool, which is just flipping everything. So now it would extrude everything the opposite way. Everything else is the same. The next one is symmetric. So it would mean it spaces everything evenly between. So you would have a half of it uh, on the bottom and half on the top. The next one is asymmetric, which has it awfully cent or off centered, which means you can do extrude it one way and then extrude it a different way. So if I wanted to extrude the bottom half 0.5 and then the top would still be 0.25. You can also uh, select the two, which would be if I had a sketch somewhere else and I wanted to extrude it to a different point of the sketch. And I'm just gonna extrude it 0.25. Okay, and then uh, let's teach you the fillet tool next. 
Um, the fillet tool allows you to round your edges. Um, whatever number you have typed in here is however much it'll be rounded. So let's do point 0.125 like it was already. And then select this edge and then this edge. And now it rounds both edges. But I also want to round this edge. And then this one, this one, this one, and then this one. And you see how it doesn't work because it doesn't actually like how I selected this edge first because it doesn't allow you to have all the edges selected. And to fix this, uh, you can either go, or it, the easiest way is just actually to cancel out and then just redo it because sometimes it doesn't like everything that you can do. Select both edges. And then for this, I'm just gonna try and select these two and then these two instead of selecting this one in the center, and then apply. If you click apply, you can keep using the fillet tool, but if you don't want to do that, you could just hit okay and it will close the tool. Uh, next, let's do the hole tool. Actually, before we do that, we have to make a new sketch. Uh, to make a new sketch on this, it's just click the this again, and then you're able to click a face on this. And then, we are able to use a point. And let's place the point right here, which is the center, or is where all of this meets at. And finish sketch, hole. And now I'm able to select that tool, or select that point. Uh, most of the time it will auto select it if there's only one area that it's able to do. Let's make this, uh, 0.25 inches and this is just the basic stuff that you would need. You also have all the different types of top or uh, the sets of the bolt or screw. And now we have a pretty much Pac-Man like object. I'm also going to do some basic color and I'm going to do yellow. And there you go, you created a Pac-Man. And to save it, hit Control S, and then we are gonna call it um, Part One Video. That's, and that's what I'm gonna call my part. And then save. And then every so often, uh, if you continue working on this part, you should continue to save. And that is our first object um, and for this video I forgot to mention uh, we are gonna be talking about setting up inventor and then learning the basics to navigate and then basic part modeling uh, some tics, tips and tricks for this is uh, make sure you save often I recommend saving every five minutes or any major iteration to your parts if you need to change something drastic you should always make a copy of the file and keep the same file name but add like a version iteration afterwards. Um, make one central location for all of your files. That's what I did at the beginning of the video when I created a new project. Uh, this allows all my parts that I create to be under this area. Um, and if you wanna switch between the locations, you can't just switch it if you have that area located. So you have to close all your parts and then you're able to switch between your different projects. And then uh, make sure you have a computer that's actually able to run Inventor. Um, to have it run smoothly, I recommend like between eight to 16 gigs of RAM, depending on what kind of modeling you're doing. If you're just doing basic parts, eight should be perfectly fine. But if you're trying to do multiple part assemblies, then I recommend at least 16. Uh, another thing is try and have at least a uh, four core CPU. It really doesn't matter the speed of it. It just needs uh, more cores so it's able to process more. And then um, if you have a M.2 or SSD, that's highly recommended to save or to the location that you save all your parts. If you don't have something like that, your hard drive would be fine. But remember, um, SSDs and M.2 drives are a lot faster. Um, for your video or for this video, uh, I'm going to give you three pieces of homework. Um, 
actually four. The first piece is uh, just play around with Inventor more to try and f figure out how to do more parts. Um, also, I want you to try and make a one inch cube, um, cube, uh, then a one inch diameter cylinder that's three inches tall, and then try and make a one inch spear.